Friday, uh, February the second. Welcome to the East Chapel Hill Rotary Club meeting. My name is Barry Joyce, and I am your Sergeant of Arms today. So, if that's a problem, you can take the next few seconds to get up and quietly leave the room. <laughs> so, uh, let me get started. I'm gonna get get the uh, housekeeping items. Uh, finish first. So I know that Jeff has a guest. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity before we get too long in the tooth here. Uh, what members do we have that have guests that you'd like to introduce? Jeff, starting with uh, I've got uh, Adam Lang here. Uh, Adam's in uh, real estate. Stand up. Stand up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Raise your hand. And is, is that our only guest today? Do we have any uh, visiting Rotarians? Any visiting Rotarians? All right. All right, today, uh, here's the fine basket. So the fine basket is if you have a Y in your last name, if you have a 4 in your Social Security number, or if you can remember what your North Carolina driver's license number is. You got a couple dollars in it. Uh, at this time, we will, uh, as we're getting our dollars ready, uh, we're trying to figure out what I just said. Uh, I'm going to uh, open our meeting with a blessing. And I'd like to start with uh, mentioning someone near and dear close to us and close to the Carolina family. I'd like to start our blessing with a moment of silence for Eric Montross and what he meant to this community, what his family means to this community beyond the basketball court. And I'm blessed to have had the opportunity to know him when he was a player. And uh, he's just a fine human being that are in short supply these days. So uh, just 10 seconds of a uh, moment of silence for Eric and his family. Anybody else in your life that may uh, you may have lost, and then I'll have a, a brief blessing. Thank you. Okay, our blessing is Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, your wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. May we honor one another by keeping an open mind. May we voice our truth and listen with an open heart. May we discern your will to unite and fruitful outcome. We ask for your wisdom and grace to use our talents for the betterment of others. And that's a good segue into our four-way test, which is a hallmark of Mr. Clayton's tenure. So can we start by going with the full four-way test, please? The four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it will and better friendships and will it be beneficial to all concerned? Great. Okay, so I have seven minutes and fifty-eight seconds to do what I gotta do. So uh, my name is Barry Joyce. For those of you who don't know me, I moved to the area in the mid nine early nineties. Uh, became became an intern uh, at the Dean Smith Center uh, while Vicky was. Uh, uh, second in charge and then stayed on until 2001. Uh, I was in the facility and event management field and rather than bore you with all my swan song stories uh, uh, that we all that's been in event facility management, we all have a, a Rolodex of funny stories. I'm not going to bore you with those today, but I will say that I was glad to see David here today because I'm going to brag on David. My job uh, as at the Smith Center was to staff concerts with student health. And we paid the student organization a whopping $10 a person, gave them a hot dog and a drink, and then they served as our, our, our ushers along with volunteers. And I could 
just money in the bank before Dickie even knew who I was. David was my first experience with the last name Vador, and he always came to the task. And the thing I loved about David is it didn't matter if it was ludicrous or George Strait. Uh, if he said that they were going to be there, he was there. So you must have carried a big stick. <laughs> the other thing that I'll mention is uh, my, my fondest memory, one of my first concerts, first time I had the pleasure of meeting Eric. So Eric, as you would expect, followed... NCAA guidelines, he bought his own tickets to the George Strait show, and he was sitting in the orchestra on the side of the George Strait show. And George Strait has an opening act, and in between the opening act, they turn the house lights on to change the set over to George. And uh, so Eric was there with his girlfriend, uh, and, and who would then become his wife. We turned the house lights on, and no joke, Eric was sitting on the end seat there was at least 25 people standing in the aisle waiting to try to get an autograph from him. So my boss, Ned Collette at the time, said, we're going to go rescue Eric. So they went up and got Eric, and because he had paid for the tickets, we set two seats inside of the bike rack on the floor where he had an unobstructed <coughs> view. But I remember his job, my job was to escort him to his seats, and that's my first experience with the Carolina basketball player. He walked off the elevator and I'm turning and I look at the crook of his elbow and that trying to put things in perspective for me. And he was just as gracious and as nice as could be. So I was gonna tell you some other stories, but you know, this this story came kind of across my desk. I heard this and it's about our good friend, John Perry. Uh, I moved here in the nineties, got married in 2007 and, and been a member of Downing Creek. John's my neighbor and so I couldn't hesitate but to tell this story. So. This sweet little lady comes waltzing into the Fidelity Bank up the street, and she's got this big bag of money in her hand. And so she sees the receptionist, and she says, uh, yes, I'm new to the area. I've done a lot of research on the local financial institutions and the executives, and I understand that, that Mr. Hey, Mr. John Perry is the presiding executive here at the branch. And the young man said, yes, ma'am, he is. So, well, I have a large amount of money that I would like to deposit. And she pointed to the bag of money. And she said, I need to see Mr. Perry immediately. The young man says, man, Mr. Perry is a very important man. You can't just show up here and expect to meet with him. She said, son, this is a large amount of money, and I want to bring my business to this bank because of Mr. Perry. So he looked back there and said, well, just hold on just a second. So he comes back a short time later, he said, ma'am, you're in love. Mr. Perry's here, and he'll be glad to see you. So she walks in, and John is sitting at his desk, Natalie attired, and she said, my name's John Perry, it's nice to meet you. She said, oh, I know who you are. She puts her big bag of money on the desk. He said, how can I help you today? She said, I'm here to make a large deposit, and I would like to open a savings account in your bank. I've done a lot of research here on this, at this institution. I've seen your social media profile. I've, I'm used to, to looking at executives like you, and I want to deposit my money here because of you. Well, how much money do you have? He, she said, I have $180,000. So she takes that bag and dumps it out. John said, I don't think he'd ever seen it. He's been in banking in his whole working career, never seen that pile of money like that. He said, man, I don't mean to be uh, nosy, but that's a lot of money to be walking around, especially in a place that you're new to, to, to this community. So how did you, if you don't mind asking, where did this money come from? How do you make, make your money? She said, I like to place bets. <laughs> I like to place bets, John. I said, what, what kind of bets? She said, well, like I said before, I research my my, uh, my bank institutions because, you know, I have to be very trusting. And I saw your profile. I understand that you're originally from Virginia, that your dad was a commandant of the ROTC at the University of North Carolina. You are a long-standing member of this community. You have three children. You're very active in the community, a member of the East Chapel Hill Burglar Club. And I see this profile, and I notice that you're a big Tar Heel fan, very committed to the Tar Heels. Well, you know, I've seen people like you before, and I'll be honest with you, 
I think there's more to it than what your social media. In fact, I think you're a Duke fan. I think you're, I'm so sure that you're a Duke fan, I'm guessing $25,000 will tell me that you've got a D on one butt cheek and a blue devil on the other, tattoo. Johnson, you're gonna bet me $25,000 that I have Duke blue devil tattoos on my butt? She said, yeah, okay. I'm in. She said, okay, well, just one stipulation, $25,000 is a lot of money. So I would like to have my attorney with me. John said, that's fine. She said, okay, well, tomorrow at 10 a.m., we're gonna come to your office and you're gonna prove to my witness and I, my attorney and I, that you have Duke tattoos on your butt. He said, have at it, yes ma'am. So John goes home and he starts to think. I'm nervous here. 25 grand is a lot of money, but you know, Bailey's got the wedding coming up. A lot of money going into that wedding. Boy, it sure would help, in fact. So he, he went and examined himself in the, in the mirror in his bedroom, making sure that there was no blemishes or splotches or, or birthmarks or anything he didn't, he didn't remember that could remotely look, be looked at as a Duke tattoo. And he actually, actually called Stephanie over and she thought he was crazy. She looked at him, no, 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 no. So he said, you know what? It's a lot of money, you go a long way. There's no way that I'm gonna lose this bet. So he went to bed and sure enough, the next morning, 10 o'clock in the next morning, she comes in right on time, 10 o'clock. She's got her return <coughs> right. And the first thing she does is she says, okay, just repeat the bet. Duke Blue Devil on one cheek and the D on the other. I said, yep, that's it. Okay, let her rip. So John mooned her. And she said, now, $25,000 is a lot of money. So if you don't mind, she broke out her reading glasses and she got some latex gloves on. I'd like to do a little closer examination from, a, from an arm's length, if you don't mind, just to make sure. I want to make sure that I can look at all. John's like thinking to himself. Man, this guy's absolutely crazy. But it's 25 grand. 25 grand that will help me cross the finish line of Bailey having the day of her dream. Absolutely. Whatever you need. So she gets out of there and she puts her gloves on and she's doing her thing. And finally, John's sitting there just nervous and just awkward. All of a sudden, he hears this. John's like, what the hell is that? turned around and, his, and her attorney's over here doing this. <laughs> Knocking his head against the wall. She's like, what the hell's wrong with your attorney? She said, oh, don't mind him. I bet him $100,000 that at 10 o'clock this morning, I would have the senior vice president of Fidelity Bank's ass in my hands. <laughs> Presentation here. He's not there. No, not gonna have my well you guys, you guys are saved. You don't have to hear Rob Michaelin uh talk about how great a curling uh person he is. It's good to see everybody here today. Uh welcome back, Bill Bowling. Good to see you back. Uh Mike Maxwell, good to see you here again. Missed anybody hadn't been here in a while. And it's, got, it's good to see you. Uh a couple quick things. Don't forget next Friday we are at the Sheridan for our partners of our time. Partners Valentine lunch at the Sheridan Hotel here in Chapel Hill. Uh, she's going to send Tim's going to send the email sign up sheet out one more time. If you and we've done a, a old fashioned sign up here too, uh, so we can give the Sheridan a count of how many folks are going to attend that. Again, it's at the Sheridan back there old home for just one meeting because we'll be a little bit bigger than this place can uh, handle. Uh, we have a member just transferred in our club. I'm going to get Fred to introduce himself to everybody for just a couple minutes here, and then we'll move on with our program. All right, Fred. Mm 
No Smiths. You snuck in on me. You ain't been here since we moved to this place. It's good to have you here, buddy. Hi, I'm Fred McLaren. <clears throat> Just newly joined you all. I've been a Rotarian probably for over 50 years. My category is Explorer, uh, Arctic and Undersea. And I'll quickly tell you what that's about. I'm a retired Navy captain, retired nuclear submarine officer and captain, commanding an attack boat, and a Naval Academy graduate. My first career, I spent uh, 26 years in the Navy, 24 with submarines, as among the first 50 to be selected by Admiral Rickover uh, on five different attack submarines. I, I know I hold the record for Cold War missions, collecting intelligence close up without being detected. And I commanded a nuclear attack submarine for four years. Uh, high points of that career was the fact that I was on two Arctic expeditions. Uh, the first uh, survey of the Northwest Passage, first submarine to go from the Atlantic Pacific by the North Pole. And then I commanded uh, Queen Fish in 1970 when we surveyed uh, for the first time in history, uh, 3,500 nautical miles uncharted of the entire Siberian continental shelf under very thick ice, doing most of that 20 feet above the bottom and clearing the ice overhead by 30 feet. Of course, you can see what it did to me here. <laughs> and on that first Arctic trip, I was on in 1960, believe it or not, I, I'm going to take an extra minute here, playing the first game of baseball at the North Pole. And that baseball is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. We situate a pitcher's mound at the North Pole, line up the bases. So if you circumnavigate, you hit a home run, you circumnavigate the globe. If you hit the ball into right field and across the international date line, then tomorrow you threw it back successfully, it went back into yesterday. And of course, as you can imagine, sliding took on the meaning. And, uh, I, uh, on my submarine career, I've written three books. They're all on Amazon and published by the University of Alabama or the uh, Naval Institute. Uh, my last job in the Navy, I commanded a major Department of Defense scientific lab with 3,200 science and engineers, a uh, billion dollar budget, had six different labs. And I went from that at the age of 49 uh, straight to Cambridge University. Uh, didn't want to be a beltway bandit and embarked on a scientific career, got my master's at Cambridge in England and went to the University of Colorado Boulder, got my doctorate, uh, brought in an $8.2 million grant just two months before getting my doctorate. So that, that set me up nicely as an associate professorship. Uh, about the time I made full professor, five years later, I got selected to be publisher of Science News and they had that nonprofit. And then at uh, the same time, I had an adjunct professorship at Columbia University. And I had a great but short scientific career. And if, incidentally, everything I'm telling you, you'll find on the internet. It's all, I'm all over the internet. And a lot of the talks I've given are on YouTube. And then uh, from there, I became the 37th president of the now 120-year-old Explorers Club. I, I headed that up for four years. And uh, so I'm also president emeritus of the Explorers Club, founded by the country's early Arctic explorers. And I'm also president, American, uh, president emeritus of the American Polar Society, founded by Admiral Byrd in the uh, early Antarctic explorers. And uh, while in the Explorers Club, I then embarked on three different careers simultaneously. I'm in my late 60s then, I started diving the Titanic with the Russians. Made two dives on Titanic, and then the National Geographic one year, Woods Hole the second. I made the, took part in the first man dives down to 16,000 feet, the German battleship Bismarck, and then also dove the uh, seafloor spreading areas, the Atlantic and Pacific, and then I'm also proud of instrument rated most of my aerobatic uh, syllabus done. And I test flew and then became chief pilot of a beautiful submersible 
This is 2003 that you flew like an airplane down to 1,500 feet. And that, I did that up to about 2016 and I had to get the stupid hip replaced. And uh, at the same time, I started lecturing on cruise ships. So I've done over 50 of those. And uh, right now I'm relegated to writing books. But I have come away with three things in my life. I, as you can see, I can't hold down a job for very long. Uh, I'll do anything to avoid yard work. And I had all the male bonding I need for 100,000 years. <laughs> and I'll just say, I hope my wife is going to be here today, but Avery Battle Russell. Now, her family is my third wife. Uh, you can tell from my life. Uh, but I had to get at least through three wives to get on that keeper. But she's been with me going on 36 years. But her family's been in the Carolinas since the late uh, 1770s. Scots coming into Cape Fear. They came to Chapel Hill in the 1820s, always associated with the university. Kemp Battle with the president's uh, ancestor. Uh, Avery County is named after her family. The, Four Avery brothers were all killed in the Civil War fighting for the Confederacy. And then the last thing, and you'll meet her here, I hope, soon. The last thing that come from a centuries-old military family, with few exceptions, we've fought in every war since the Revolutionary. And of course, before that, everybody fought the British. And uh, my two sons were Marine officers, they're out now. And three grandsons are Marine, Marine officers. Now, two are pilots, and one will get commissioned. Uh, he's going to go into ill artillery here this May. And uh, that's about it. Uh, <laughs> I said, All right, I get to introduce our program today. Uh, we uh, switched up on everybody after we had such a fun week last week. We thought we might try something a little bit different this week. So uh, we've got a longtime Chapel Hill resident, good friend of mine, uh, mediocre golfer. Uh, <laughs> I wish I were mediocre. Has been with the Better Business Bureau for quite some time now. And Steve. Uh, I helped the, uh, uh, the Better Business Bureau of the Eastern Carolina start a program called Scam Busters. And a lot of us know, how many of you, how many here get, get uh, spam phone calls and emails from people you never heard of and the prince just left you all this money, okay? Well, Steve's gonna tell us how to avoid these scams and how to, how to, how to navigate this new bombardment of stuff we're getting. I think this will be a very interesting. He's brought a, uh, his assistant with him today. And Steve, we welcome you and we look forward to your program. Thank you. that I'm aware of, graduate of the Naval Academy, who was a submarine commander and a, and a member of his club, John Bear being, being the first. And JP, keep your seat, keep your pants on. <laughs> you see my no, no. <laughs> so uh, before I get started, I'll say two years, Microphone. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Four scored so. two, two years ago. Uh, <laughs> during Eubin Davis's first season as coach of the Tar Heels, the Boo Birds came out in force until late in the season when uh, we had a magical run through the first half of the NCAA championship. And, and that pretty much quieted everyone. Then somewhere to sit that stage here. Let's come uh, I, I'm not going to be using this for long. Uh, but then after, after uh, well then last year, no one's expectations were met. And, you know, there are people shouting, fire Hubert. We have lots of people in this room who I'm sure were, were them, some of them I can identify. Pro but, takes good. But this year, this year things are definitely changed. And hopefully, let's keep scrolling down. We're talking now. Good. Uh, 
this year, hopefully, Hubert has silenced some naysayers for good. But do you think that our Rotary Club could learn from Hubert's story and maybe bring back Mike Clayton, Mike Clayton for two more years as president? Is that no, no, no. Can, can we all agree that that's really a lousy idea? See, I knew this club could agree on something. So, so there, we're, we're off to a good start. Good afternoon, everyone. Last week's controversial meeting, after it, Mike called me and said he wanted to make certain to go in the complete opposite direction with this week's speaker. He wanted dull, bland. And the first person that came to his mind was me. <laughs> Mike, thank you. It's always great to be, be thought of as, as the first per, first one. So, no, no, I'm number one. So, uh, actually, Mike knew about the scam busters and that thought uh, might be willing to fill the opening. So, we are here. Nick Hill is with me. Nick is awesome. He he's, uh, works at BBB and he is our digital marketing specialist. Uh, senior digital marketing specialist right there. And uh, he and I typically present scam busters together. And uh, we uh, developed the program was initiated in uh, I developed, started in 2017, we digitized it in 2018, we took it on, on the road. 2020 and 21, there were no uh, presentations going on anywhere, pretty much. But uh, in the basically four years that uh, we've been presenting, we're approaching 10,000 people we've reached locally. Other BBBs have adopted the program and are, some are using it even more than us. So, we're proud that we, we think it, it's helping because scams are a big problem, as everyone should know. Just how big, it's estimated that over $50 billion with a B is lost annually in the U.S. And you hear a number like that, and it doesn't, it doesn't sink in. But uh, look, at, look at some of these companies. You know, these are well-known companies. Scams are bigger than Coca-Cola, American Express, Nike. Uh, and, and scams don't even have a source or anything. I mean, so, so it's huge. And the, the idea behind Scam Busters was to, be, to develop something to bring to high school mainly because good news for this crowd, most people think that, that old fogies like us are the main targets of scams. But the fact of the matter is that 18 to 24 year olds are the ones who are really losing the most. Now, when the older folks do get scammed, they tend to lose more per, per instance. But, but like I said, younger people are more at risk. So we want to develop something to bring to high schools to reach kids and teach them to, to recognize and avoid scams and do it before they reach their most vulnerable years. But if we had just a speech, unless it was inflammatory like last week, uh, probably everyone would have fallen asleep and schools wouldn't invite us anyway. So develop the game, Scam Busters, and it's worked out great. There's competition because we divide the classes into, into teams. Uh, there's a prize at the end on display for the winning team members. And, uh, uh, you know, we have fun with it. So without further ado, I want two tables to volunteer as my teams for today. Uh, team one, okay, Chris, Chris, Chris is your captain, I guess. And Jim, is that, uh, oh, are you pointing elsewhere? Or are you say your table, Jim? Jody, so your table, okay, your table will be team two. Okay, so, should we play? I say we take it away. <laughs> so team one, you get the layup, actually. We, we, we give you an easy one to start off. Well, we want everyone to read this, and 
Tell us if you think it's a scam or legitimate, and and discuss among with your team why you think these things. Okay, so team one, you have you have a scam. Team one says it's a scam. Why do you think it's a scam? Look at the front of the email, look at the bottom of the copyright 2014, uh, and then where they're trying to say they're located if you can't see it. Okay, well, point out some things I agree with and a couple of things I don't necessarily, because copyright can last, I mean, for, for a number of years. But he said it, it's, it's who it came from. He says it's from Apple Inc. What's the matter with that? Oh, wait a second, look at that email address. That's not an Apple email address, is it? We got it over here. You got it over there? Well, you have to wait your turn. You're team too. So we actually have some, point out some other things on this one. Yeah, most of the scammers are overseas, which is why there's so few arrests. Uh, but also, English is typically a second language, so so uh, there are lots of spelling errors or, or grammatical errors in these communications. Unfortunately, that's changing with AI, so we're in deeper doo doo. Can I say doo doo in front of this crowd? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, so yes, yeah, suspension will. There should be a space. We, we didn't even highlight down here. Email is misspelled. But one that kills me is Apple Music. That's their product name, Apple's product name, and they always capitalize the A in Apple, the M in music, for them not to do this. I mean, can I see a quick show of hands? How many of you think that Apple has the resources to hire proofreaders uh, and not misspell their own product name? <laughs> All right, well, at any rate, team one, you got it right. Take it. Ooh. Sorry about that line. It slipped. But I got six. Yeah. Give them a toss for your points for the round. Let's see. Throw them up here. Okay. Or knock over the bottom. There you go. Six points for team one. All right. All right. Team two. Hey. Help them out with this. All right. Team two. I'm going to you guys. So uh, let's say you are opening up Netflix on your computer to watch whatever's hot right now. What are you guys watching? What's a good show on Netflix? Slow of Horses. Slow of Horses, I've heard that's phenomenal, all right. So let's say you're opening up your computer to watch Slow of Horses, and this pops up, it's saying, hey, real quick, before you can watch Slow of Horses, we need you to validate your payment information. So I want you guys to take a look at this, uh, and especially take note, it says secure server at the top with a lockbox icon. The same thing is also down there at the bottom. Team two, I need you guys to tell me if you think that this is valid or if you think this might be a scam. 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 Already on scam with confidence. I like it. And team, what were you guys thinking? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody on team two tell me why they think this might be a scam? Say okay, so it seems to be the, uh, the HTTP uh, address. Uh, okay. Which looks suspect. Yeah. Steve, can we zoom into that? Yes, I can. So, whenever you check out a new website or open a new page, it's a good idea to look first at the URL at the top because the URL is going to tell you so many things about whether or not a site is safe. And we're gonna start here at the very left of it where it starts with HTTP. It should be S. It should be S, yes. And do you know what that S stands for? Security. Yes. So we do not see that S, so immediately, huge red flag, right? Now, another thing I wanna point out, let's back it up, Steve. Let's go back out for just a second here. I drew everybody's attention to these lockbox icons, but those don't mean anything, all right? 
those are just there to throw you off. The only lockbox that would matter was if there was one in the URL on the left side, which would again signify that it is a secure site. So we don't see that strike one. We don't see the S in HTTPS strike two. I saw a hand over here. You got a strike three for me? No, I have, I have a question. <laughs> yes. So I, I've heard about that S, I get the S thing, but who controls the S and what confidence do we know that someone can spoof an S? Ooh, ooh, I'm really glad you brought that up because we get to that later in this presentation uh, with students typically when we have more time. Uh, so there are third parties that will verify a company's security and will grant them that S and grant them that lockbox. However, because the internet's grown so fast, uh, you know, there's some companies that will grant that and they're not always, you know, fully vetting their employees. Maybe somebody slips through the cracks. So what I tell people generally is you should look for that lockbox and you should look for the HTTPS, but that's not necessarily a guarantee it's a safe, a safe site. Now, if you don't see those, then that's a really bad sign. But if you can piece that all together, along with some other things that we talk about throughout this presentation, it's gonna be a good sign that it is a safe website. So strike three on here. The last thing I wanna point out on this URL is I want you guys just to look at this and tell me. Is this a good looking URL? No, it's really ugly. And it's ugly because they snuck in all this junk between Netflix and .com. This is no longer a Netflix domain, you guys. This is accountupdate.com. I don't know what that website is. I don't know what they're gonna do with my information. I don't know if that is safe. Now let's say instead it was netflix.com slash, you know, there's numbers and characters, and that'd be safe. That'd still be a Netflix domain, but that right there, that's three. Team two, good. There you go. There you go. Good show, how about that? Good show. Good show. Do with the good show. Good show. One. They got six off. Six off time. Point. All right, all time after the first round. Team one, we're back to you. We are on, uh, you go on. Yeah, I'll talk about this one because social media is just a great place, you know, and scammers love social media. So this is an example that I pulled uh, from Twitter. I know they call it X now, but I am still going to call it Twitter. Um, it's Elon Musk talking about this brand new cryptocurrency, this great opportunity. Team One, what do we think about this? Scam. Scam! Off the rip, they're telling me scam. You don't trust me, Elon? <laughs> so why is the richest guy in the world asking for money? Maybe he wants to be richer? No. <laughs> what makes you think this is a scam? Team Two wants to help you. All right, take it away. Twitter handle is at E1 E1 on Musk. Okay. Anybody else see anything wrong with this one? All right. I think on, our high school students are farther along than you guys. Well, I think they see stuff like this a lot because I think what I'm going to tell you guys about this example is getting more and more common. Yes. You only got two retweets and seven quotes for, for somebody like him would be thousands. Yeah, he'd probably be able to manipulate those numbers. Never want to hear that. Uh, yeah, uh, T1 pointed out that if you guys can see here, he has two retweets, seven quotes, and 14 likes. The owner of Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Looks like well, on his left hand, hand, he had six fingers. Yeah, that picture was copied and pasted. The picture was actually not copied and pasted. The picture was made using AI. In fact, everything about this example, from the text to the image, I generated using AI. And this is just an example that I wanted to show you guys how scammers are using AI to make themselves look more realistic, all right? They're trying to impersonate this well-known and sometimes respected figure to gain people's trust. And, you know, they've done so by generating his likeness. But even though AI may seem big and scary, there are some things you can look at to tell you if it's gonna be a fake. 
And I think the easiest thing to look for is the fingers, all right? No matter how good AI image generation gets, it will always have trouble generating fingers for some reason. I like to think it's similar to art, you know? If anybody's ever tried drawing fingers or drawing hands, it's so difficult. And AI has the same problems. So another thing I want to point out too, you know, if you're on social media, you should always look for verified accounts and verified companies, especially when they're trying to sell you something or get you to invest. And yes, this is a verified account on Twitter, but as some of you may know, you can actually pay for that verification now. So it's less likely that something like this is going to be trustworthy. Team one, you guys got it. Whoa, we got it too. Yeah, but it wasn't your turn. You have to wait your turn. <laughs> Six, six. six. What is this? Hey, Chris, the bagel. All right, team two. It is your turn again, and you're going shopping. You're getting a present, but you're getting the present for me. So you think, well, I don't want to spend much. So let me go online first and see if I can find a coupon. And you find this e-coupon at Michael's, and so you decide, well, are you are you going to use this or not? Looks real. Looks real to me. And if it's fake, what's the lowest going on in the world? Right? Team two, do you have an answer? Real. No. Real. You're saying real. Yeah. So what? So what do scammers want from you? Information. What else? Money. They want money and they want information. Is this asking for money? No. Is it asking for information? No. No. What's the worst that can happen? You bring it up, you bring an item up to the cashier and hand them this coupon, and they say, I'm sorry, it's not valid. Well, then you have the choice of not buying the item, paying full price, or looking for another coupon. Yeah. But that's it. So team two. Oh, hey, 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 it's a <laughs> With the insist for my six. six, you didn't get five and one. You got six again. Oh, no. You did it the differently. There you go. I think they are linked. Which one? All right, team one. We are going back to social media, but instead we are here on Instagram. And everything I'm going to say about Instagram still holds true for Facebook. They're the same company. So I want you guys to look at this. Travis Kelsey here. Tell me, you think, if this is a real endorsement or if something might be fishy here? It's fake. Taylor's not in the picture. <laughs> 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 Come on, Taylor. Fake, because he's got six fingers again. <laughs> That's why he's so good. He's got lots of likes. Yeah, he, he has lots of likes. Where's the account? I don't see the name of the actual account. So the account at the top is Killatrav, and he has actually made this post with a company called Drink Accelerator. And if you guys want to do some research, he's tagged them here, so you can go check out their page. And when you check out their page, it looks like this. Well, what about his page? So his page was Killatrav. Yeah, it, it was verified, though. I don't understand the problem because they're not making money or, um, I mean, there were a couple of what, what's the... He wants you to buy this product and, you know, maybe the product is either faulty or it is a scam entirely. They're never going to ship you anything. But this is the company that is going to sell you the product here. Well, um, if you purchase it, uh, it is an online transaction. If we go back to the page here, ultimately you're supposed to click on that link, and then the link you can purchase online. It's a scam. So team one, you say it's a scam. Yeah. Teammates agree with you. All right. Nick and I, you're wrong. You're wrong. Oh no! And we got six. We got six ounces. 
This is not a scam. Yeah. Thank you, Roy. Yeah, this is a real post from the real channel where he's parked with a real company. And you can tell that this is his real account because he is verified on Instagram. So unlike Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, they have more precautions and more verification steps. Whereas Twitter, you can just buy that blue badge. Yes? There's no lipstick on either cheek. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that might be misleading now. Let's see, this is from September. I don't know if they're at that stage yet in September. Um, but he's verified, and then that company too, Drink Accelerator, um, was also verified, and they made posts with him as well. Uh, I think if you're able to piece that information all together, it will give you a good sign that this is something legitimate. But even still, social media is ripe with scams. There is so much shady stuff on there. I think the best thing to do is, even if you are interested in purchasing Drink Accelerator, I would recommend going outside of the app, going outside of Instagram, Googling the company, finding their website that way, just so you alleviate any possibility of there being a scam. And on that note, going back to the first couple we showed you, the Apple Music and Netflix, when you get a communication from any company like, like that that you're not expecting, it's always best just to log into your account how you normally do and check check there. Okay, so we were back to team two for the tiebreaker. Uh, you received this this email from Apple saying uh, that your your uh, change was made to your billing address. If you made this, everything's fine. If not, they want you to uh, click on this HTTPS appleid.apple.com. Are you going to do that? No. No. So first off, as you they hover over that URL, so they can have that say that, but you but the underlying link might be somewhere else. You're right. That's a hyperlink and not a URL. You also don't know what the Apple what you are, uh, what domain this email came from. Very good. So so, so you want to give that answer to Team Two so they can throw it. They were gonna say it. <laughs> okay, okay, for the win. Maybe. Four and four. Oh wait, you got you got double four. You you have the choice of taking your eight points or rolling again. Do you want to keep it? Eight. And if you if you roll again, you have to take the second score. Oh, they got the eight. They got the eight. Didn't they get the accelerator drink question wrong? I think that was hard question. I don't know. It really doesn't matter. You're not getting hats This is a scam. This is a scam. You're, you're not getting out anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> Too many pain. So, yeah, so what we can do here is, Steve, can you go to the next slide? And I'll explain this real quick. So, yeah, so they were disguising two things here. So they made a hyperlink that made it look like it was taking you to an Apple website. But instead, when you hovered over that link, it shows that it's taking you to app.le. That's not Apple. Same thing with the email at the top. It says it's from Apple, but you can make your email say that they're coming from everybody. And once you hovered over that sender, it showed you that it's coming from, what is Apple ID? That ID at apple.co? I don't know what that is. Um, and we use this example just to show people how important it is that you hover over a link before you click on it. Uh, let's say you're on a, uh, a mobile device, a phone or a tablet, you can long press and it will show you where that URL is taking you. So always hover the link over the link, always long before you jump into a new website. Oh, sorry, can I, can I just? Yes. Uh, to me, what was suspicious was that they say if you do not make these changes, you will leave an unauthorized person has access to your account. You should change your password as soon as possible. They would ordinarily say, please let us know your security has been breached. They wouldn't say, go in your account and change your password. So, right? so Jerry, yeah. that might be the case today. This was actually copied from an email I received when I, when I made a change. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah. Okay, so 
we interrupt this program to bring you a special message. I want to depart from Scam Busters and talk instead about our Rotary Club. I've been a member of East Chapel Hill Rotary since 2000, which makes me a relative newbie compared to uh, some of your folks in, in here, but, but I've been, I've seen you already over most of it. Uh, when I joined the club, I think there were about 100 members of the membership was hovering at that point, including very few women. Uh, now we have over 150 members. I'm glad to say a good percentage of our newer members are female, though we still struggle with diversity. There's certain things which have always stood out about East Chapel Hill Rotary. I think if you ask any of the long-standing members to enumerate them, they would say irreverence, fun, humor, great speakers, present, that present, don't be excluded, uh, a feeling that members are your closest friends no matter how well or little you know one another, social functions, irreverence, being the young person's club, Thankfully, since Mike Fields became a, a member two years before me, fantastic charitable programs, especially on the international front. And did I say a reference? Uh, those things make East Chapel Hill special, or why people join, and certainly why members look forward to every Friday and remain members. But I've noticed our club change in the past few years, and it breaks my heart. As far as our being the young, young person's club, look around you. Look at me. <laughs> uh, so maybe that should be struck from the list. Used to be you wanted to take notes during the sergeant and arms presentations to help you remember all the great punchlines. They were often the highlight of the meetings. The past few years, a change has occurred, which in no way is the fault of the increased female membership nor the individual serving in the role. Barry did a great job today. But there are few people who have pushed a more censored agenda on our club. Maybe it goes for the sake of the delicate ears that we have. Uh, well, when I first joined this club, one of the evening events, which was a staple of the club back then, was joke night. Members typically met in a restaurant or bar took turns telling jokes, and finally those who were there voted to select the best joke. First time I attended, a female member finished in second place. I think the only reason she didn't win was because some of the men were too embarrassed in her, in her presence to admit they got her joke. <laughs> At least I think they got it. Then several years later, uh, at a meeting, a male sergeant in arms caused quite a ruckus. Uh, when he told an admittedly very off-color joke. He was reprimanded and the entire club was warned. The thing nobody seemed to recall was that a female sergeant in arms had told the exact same joke only a few months previously, and everyone loved it. And I'm absolutely not advocating for insensitivity, nor am I saying that we don't have to adjust and stay, stay current with times. But I'm also saying we had a great thing that lots of people have loved for a long time. Let's not ch totally change our identity on the whim of a very few. We don't want to, we don't want anyone to be offended, but if something is said that rubs you the wrong way and you're in the minority, perhaps you need to become a bit less thin skinned. Having said that, it seems censorship has been imposed recently upon our sergeants at arms but not on our speakers. <clears throat> not that many weeks ago, I counted at least three times our speaker said the word, excuse me, shit, when it was totally unnecessary and inappropriate, that there were no objections. With that in mind, since I'm coming to you today as speaker, I'm going to say last week's meeting was a total shit show. I think President Mike and, Ch and Speaker Chair Nick were both blindsided by the direction last speaker, last week's speaker took, and I don't, I don't blame them a bit for what happened. But someone suggested the speaker, likely knowing full well the nature of the speech. Politics and religion have long been frowned upon topics for our speakers because members have differing views, and those speakers do not build goodwill and better friendships. 
Thank you. Scheduling such a speaker, whether they spout my beliefs or those 180 degrees from mine, is neither fair to all concerned nor beneficial for all concerned. Our podium should not be a pulpit where someone can spend 40 minutes shoving their doctrine, which some members may disagree with, down their throats. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Go Heels. Nick. Just be out of here safe. Thank you, Steve, for an interesting program. I know I enjoyed it a lot. I've got two things to say. The meeting's about over. And go to hell, dude. Y'all <laughs> have a good week. And remember, next weekend at the Sheridan, bring your partners. I'm looking forward to see all the lovely ladies dressed to the hill. I'll even be wearing red. Bust your table, bust your table. We don't have a cleanup service. Please put your trash in the trash can.